pick up on on our lessons so far i um i want to thank us for coming out yesterday um, to also meet with our, our guest who spoke to us about um tech um in general and i believe some of us or all of us we learn a few things from him too and some of the questions we had in mind we asked and i believe we got the answers we needed so things like that are going to be happening from time to time so we can also know that we are on the right track okay so we're working towards bringing not just somebody from maybe the software engineering aspect but people outside of the box like uh, project managers too to tell us how they handle their team or what they look forward um, for, um, for their teammates to have and sometimes i think i will, I will also bring hr to, to speak to us so we can also know what hrs are looking for in software engineers or software developers and stuff like that i believe it's going to help us um position our mind onto what we should do and what we shouldn't do so that will be in the future session so that's by the way of course so i welcome everybody again to the meet and before we start i would like somebody to give us a recap of what he or she has learned from the beginning of, of the session or what um maybe um what uh, you've learned outside of the box too from the lessons so far so is there anybody who give us a recap of what he or she has learned or a recap on what we've done so far don't get a chance to speak let me share my screen we are doing that anybody you don't have to give us a rundown of from beginning to end you can just pick from anywhere you've learned something and tell us so that someone who was not here too can hear from you and who knows that might be what he or she needed to hear anybody or do i need to call names because i'm seeing a lot of my friends here i'll just call somebody's name now okay so okay everybody understands what we have been doing okay that's very nice so i believe you can see my screen exclusive exclusive can you see my screen i can see your screen yes hello I everybody can see your screen. I can see your screen. okay okay we, we welcome everybody again who made you more i'll be looking for you where have you been I'm so, so sorry. Today has been just one crazy day for me, guys. Please, I really apologize. Oh. It has been very hectic. But I just had to be here. So sorry. It's, 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 it's okay. As far as you, you, you are here, after all, we, we said um, 10 minutes late is not late. You should always be on time. Right? Thank okay. you very much, David. Thank you, David. All right. So I'm happy to have everybody here again. So today we are supposed to be doing functions. Okay. But I thought to myself that there are a lot of things we should know, or there are some things we should know before we dive into functions. So, so, so that we can better understand functions. So today I designed the class specifically for functions. So I believe at the end of um, uh, our session today, we should be able to not handle all problems mm. on function but the basic ones we should see we should be able to handle them and this morning in in the group i posted a problem here yeah, that was what led me to really um, take up the class today. i posted a problem on this shown on the screen here i believe you can see so some persons understood it while some some understood it but could not express it while some did not even understand it so by the end of this our session today we should be able to handle this kind of problem because this is um, what we'll be doing today so let's dive into the business of today so before we we, we go into functions as seen on the screen here this is like in the number 14 thing we're going to do since we started our our classes so um before functions before functions we are going to be doing scope of a variable and variable modifier Although I won't go into the variable modifier, it's going to be like a homework for us. And then later on, we'll discuss on it. But today, right now, we are going to 
go into scope of variable as this is going to help us understand how to use our functions properly. So just to be sure that my workspace is on, let me open up my online, okay, my online compiler to is on. So let's go into the business of today. So what is um, scope of variable or what do we understand by scope of variable? I wouldn't give anybody the floor to answer the question. So today we'll be trying to save our time. So I hope we have our pens and, and books too ready so that we'll jot down. Although most of these things, okay, all these things are going to be available on our GitHub. So later on, you can go on and sync your re repository to get all, all the changes back. And also, I'll be adding some new tags, so be sure to check them out. I have sweet tags for us to play with. I think one, one through, just uh, on function, one through, um, I mean, of it. Okay, hold on there. Mm, it should be up to maybe 40 or something. Come on, it's too early for that. Okay. Uh, okay. I think I will just leave that for now. This is not responding. So I have some problems um, with me there. I think up to 140. Yeah, 140 or more. So I will drop them in, in, in our tags. And then from time to time, we can see how we can practice with it. It's very interesting tags. Like I've attempted some of them. If not, I've solved up to. I have. Okay, I have up to. Okay, 34. I think I've attempted up to. Is it 14? 14, yeah, 14 also. Although I've done them before, but it just felt good to also go back to them again. So I will drop them in our repository. Do well to check it out. And before I also start the class, mainly, this is replace.com. Um, one of us, um, during our last class on, on functions, Najib, um, he suggested that we should um, make use of this as it will help us um, um, code on the same platform. Okay, so I checked it out and it's, it's, it's a very interesting platform. So every after now, I will, I will want everybody to um, go on to replit.com and um, and open an account and sign up. You can also clone um, a GitHub repository there and it's, it's very, very nice. And also, I can invite you over to this place and we could work on something together. Just like having um, on GitHub, we have collaborator. I think that's how it works here. But in this, in this case, you, you know, up to four or more and, and play with a particular tags. So that's that. For, I won't be using that um, today because um, everything is not yet set up, but it's a really nice place. I believe from time to time we'll start using that. So let's go into the business of today, the scope of variables in C programming. <clears throat> so when I say scope, what do I mean? So a scope can be said um, to be a lifetime. Yeah, that's basically the definition of scope when it is related to C programming. A scope is um, the area under which a variable is applicable or alive. What do I mean by that? Today we are going to be doing more practicals. Yeah. Okay, this is a program that's from the group. Somebody said we should attempt it. Just try the but it didn't work properly. I think one to nine. I'm just going to go ahead and play a lot of this. So what is a scope? A scope means um, um, an area or region where um, our variable is applicable or alive. For example, I have this um, in A equals to 8. So in this case, um, this variable is alive in the main function. When I say main function, I don't mean like main main. I mean like main, that is the name of main. Uh, this could have been another thing. So what? I say main function, I mean main like the name. So this is a variable that is alive in our main function here. So this is what a scope is. So here, this is a scope. We'll get to understand more as we dive into the lessons of today. So when we say scope of variable, um, the scope of a variable refers to the portion of the program where the variable is accessible and, and can be used. Yes, that is what scope of a variable is. So um, given it as an example, think of it as as having a box. Yeah, think of it as having a box. And and this box, you kept it in your room. The other person is able to access that box. And then you have another box where you kept it outside. Now, let's say outside the house. In this case, anybody could ask, easily access that box. 
that is what a scope is. Yeah, where um, your code is alive and you can easily use it, or um, yeah, something like that, and it's alive. That is what you normally use. So in this case, we have two types of um, variable scopes in C. We have the global scope and the local scope. So I'll be explaining this local scope before the global scope. Don't mind my numbers. So what is a local scope? Let's still use um, um, the case study of our box here. So um, a local scope in this case is going to be a box you have in your room. So the process of you having it in your room is a local scope. So that box can be said to be local to your room because it is only um, accessible in the room there. You can't access it in the parlor or any. Let's also read. And so function, uh, it does not necessarily mean that I have to define and use a function like this. When you variable declared within a function, it could be okay. So a variable declared within a function or a block. When we say a block, I believe we know what a block is. So let me just use my browser here to explain what a block is. So whenever we open um, uh, a curly braces like this, whatever we do inside of this place, we call it a block of code or a block or a, a region, an area. So from here to here is a block. Now, if I should I have my if else statement like, like this, from here to here could be said to be the block of if statement okay so that is what a block is so from here to here so now this if statement is in, is is inside of the main block okay now whatever goes inside of this place is inside the block of if else so that is what a block is in this case so a variable We declare within a function and just a function is or a block, just as should are known as local variables. So in this case, in this case, if I have my if else statement and inside my if else statement, I say um, in box equals to nine. So this box is a variable that is local to the if to the if block here because it's declared inside of the if. That is what a local variable is. So here could be said to be our room in that case, and this is the box inside of our room. So this box here is only um, pre is present in this room and can only be accessed in this room. Okay, so that is why it is called a local variable. Okay. Now, for us to better understand um, um, the concept of this, I have a program here. Just copy it. Please just, just stay close and we are going to understand very well. Okay. So for me to better explain this for us to understand. So as I said earlier, now let's think of this whole program as a house, right? And then, uh, yeah, as let's say a compound, yeah, a very big house. And then this if block is, is like um, our room in this case. And this main block, let's say, is, is um, our parlor, right? That is our parlor. And then the whole program is a house. So what is a local variable? Now, a local variable is a variable defined inside a specific or a particular block or area in our program. In this case, that it can be used inside of that area or inside of that region alone. Now, there are cases where you can use it outside of that. Now, if you look at this if this if block, it is inside of our main block, right? So this if block too is also um, let's say a scope inside of our main here. All right, so this can be said to be the uh, inner block of code, and then um, our main function here could be said to be the outer block of code. Okay, so this is part. This our if statement is part of um, the main um, block of code too. So any anything we de define from here down to this place can be seen by our if block of code. Okay, remember our, our code is read line by line. If we run it, it is, is read line by line. So when it reads here, reads here, this is part of the main function, and this is part of the main function. So it reads here to undo whatever it is. 
So from and we understand that when it passes here, um, this block or this line cannot read what is below it. Yeah, we already know this. This line cannot read what is below it. So anything from here down to this is accessible by this our if state. Meaning that if I define a variable here in this place, I can I can use it in, inside of this place and it works. But I can't define a variable below below here outside outside of the if block, and I I, I want to use it inside of this place. It's not going to work, of course. Okay, so that is what um, a local variable is. In this case, this is local to main, and this is part of main. So from here to here, we can access this uh, variable in, inside of this place. So let's try to run some program and see and really understand this. So here we have outbox. I I made this to be out. If outbox is equal to hundred, in change um, we declared another variable here, room box. Now this is inside of this place, so it is the room box. I'm going to run this program and explain it. So value of outbox. You see, we are able to print the value of outbox. Because whatever is defined from here to here, this place can access it. Okay? So we are able to print that inside of this place. And then room box, which is what we define inside of here, we can also print it in this place, which is what we have here. But what if in the case, now let me open this. Now, value of, value of, sorry, B, uh, room box, value of room box. Now, value of room box which is inside of this if statement this if block now i can't access what is inside of this if block because this is local variable to this let me run this program so we can better understand it now it's giving us errors in line 12. what is it saying room box undeclared yes of course that's because i have not declared any variable like room box in uh in this same scope that is outside of the main this room box is local to the if that's why we cannot access it from outside um, the main block of code. Okay, so whatever we have here is not accessible in the outer block of code. But what, whatever we have from here down to this place is accessible in the inner block of code. We could have another inner block of code inside of this if statement. It will still be the same thing that from here to that to here will be accessible in that inner block of code. But afterwards, it will not be accessible. So this is the idea of a local variable. Any variable that is local to a particular, uh, that is defined or declared in a particular function and can only be used in that function is a local variable. I hope we understand this. It's very, very clear. So I wrote something here. I said, in this example, the variable room box has a, a local scope, which means it can only be accessed within the if block. Yes, as we have here, where it is declared. If we try to access um room box try to access room box outside of the if block the program will cause an error just like what we saw there so that is what it means for a variable to uh, be local our ability to un understand this is going to help us in the functions and also to solve the problem i, I posted this morning now what is a, a global scope now still using um, our box model as an example uh, from the beginning a, a global um, scope. Let's say, for example, the box we had in our room is is local. We understand it now. Now, what if we had a box outside of the house, like inside of the compound, outside, where you can see it from the room, you can see it from, from your parlor, you can see it from anywhere you are in the house. Now, that box is said to be a global box because you can um, anybody can access it at any time. You can just walk outside and then you carry it and use it. That is what it means to uh, um, what um, a global variable means in this case too. So variables declared outside of all functions at the top level of a source code file are known as global variables. These variables are accessible throughout the entire program and can be used in any function. So let me go back to our previous example. Now, what if we want to also um, be able to access this room box from here or any way in our program. That means we have to declare this variable, this variable here as a global variable. How do we do this? So I'm just going to copy this and I'll comment here out. 
to to um, declare a variable as a as 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 a global variable, just like as 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 it was stated, that it should be at the top level of our source code. Let me go back so we can read it. Variables declared outside of all functions. This is declared outside of all functions. Okay, this is a standalone um, variable. It's not inside of the main function. It's not inside of any of, of the functions. It is a standalone. It is defined outside of the function. And then what did you say again? You said uh, at the top level of a source code file. In this case here, yeah, in this case, it is at, at the top level. So let me add some spaces so we can better read it. Okay, so it's defined here. So in this case, um, any function in our program can be able to access this. So if I should tr try to print this again, five, five, five. What did I do wrong there? Uh, okay, sorry. So if I try to run this program this time, fourteen. What went wrong? The value of Bloomberg this time will cause an error because the scope of B is limited to the if block. Uh, hold on. This time will cause an error because the scope of B is limited to. Hold on. Let me check what is going on. Value of Bloomberg. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I supposed to comment that out. Okay, so I'll run this program again. Now we see that we are able to print the value of room box in our main function, and also we can we are all also able to print it in our if block because this is a global variable. So if you want to define a variable that you can use in any of your functions without having to um, have a a conflict, this is how you do it. So this is a global variable here we are going to practicalize it in our functions too and you will really see how it works now some few things uh, for us to note remember when we are um, defining our variable when we are declaring our variable it's very wrong for us to do something like this now in, uh, now in this case i'm defining our variable twice here if i run this program of course it's going to give us error uh, redefinition of output this is very wrong okay but you if you want to have a variable with the same name let's say in your program right how uh, if you if i define this variable now inside of inside of our if block it's going to work why because this is another function on it so this is another block of code on its own so it has no business with this okay so if i run this program I won't have that error you see Value of, uh, value of out box is nine. Now remember, when we printed it the first time, it printed the value that was here, which was ten. Let me comment this out. I want us to understand something now. You see, which is ten, right? Now, when I uncomment this and run it, what does it print? Nine. Why is it so? Now, when you are trying to, when in a function you are trying to use a variable that, let's say, you you've given it the same name both inside and outside of your function now um your program is going to take the closest one to it when i mean the closest one to it to first of all check a local variable in the local it will check the next out there Remember, this is also part of this main block. So it's also check the main block. That is anything we have from here. If it does not see, that's when it gives you the error that you've defined. Um, or in this case, it will check you know, in, in the local if it's, it's going to see something that is related to outbox. So it checks and it sees it. That's why it printed it. But even the case, I comment this out. It checks and it doesn't see it. It will check it the next space and printed this. If it does not see it here, maybe I defined it here, not here. It will leave here and check here and then it will print. So that is how global and local variable um, works. I hope we understand this so far. So before I go into functions, I want to give room for questions. 
Does anybody have a question relating to local and global scope before I dive into functions? Because this was like a, pre a prerequisite for us to understand functions. Okay, Pascal, please ask your question. Oh, uh, okay. Good evening, Mr. David. Uh, mine is not a question. You know, towards the Good end evening. of your explanation, mine is not a question. Towards the end of your explanation, your, your voice was breaking. So at some point, I was no longer getting what you were saying. So I don't know if you're going to explain the last part of this concerning the... Oh, the, okay. the, 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 the um, just the last, last part of it is enough. Okay, wait, 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 did you lose me, please? So I, I will know where to start exactly. No, you are talking about the local and global variable. The one it prints first whenever um, you oh, run the okay. program. Uh, okay, so that was okay. the point that you break and started. Okay, okay. There's no problem. Okay, so I'll go over it. Uh, I'll go over that again. Okay, so I was saying, um, first of all, I was saying that it is wrong for us to um, have a variable defined or declared with the same name in the same scope in our program. Now, if I do something like this, what will happen? It's going to give me an error saying that I'm redefining this particular variable. This is wrong. But in the case where um, I want to use the same variable name in another scope, it's going to work. Okay, because this block of code is on its own, it has nothing to do with another block of code. But just like I did here, I, I, I gave it the same name as Outbox. And so if I run this program, it works. It's not going to give me an error. It works, okay? Because this block is on its own. But if I should try to give another variable inside of this place the same name, it's going to give me the error that I'm trying to redefine it again. So that's another thing we should note in scope of variables that I can use the same name here, use the same name, name here. But it's not going to give me any errors because they are on on its own but um but then when, when we are trying to use that particular variable in our block of code let's say for example i'm trying to print out box here remember i have out box here i have out box here and let's say i also have out box in the global space in, in the global let me, let me give this another value let's say it so i have out box here out box so if i'm trying to use it my program is first of all going to check in the local space. In the local means in the block, uh, in the in the code block where it is where it is available at that moment. It's going to first of all check there for that particular variable I'm trying to use. So in this case, I'm trying to print out box. So it's going to first of all check here. If it does not see it here, it will also check the outer block. Remember, this if block is also a part of this block, the main block. So it will also check the main block. Remember, I said whatever we have from here to this place is accessible inside of here. So let's say I had this, this beneath this. It's not going to see it. It's only going to see it from here to here. So after checking here, if it does not see it, for example, I comment this out. It does not see it. It's going to check the outer block from here to here. If it does not still see it, it's going to check the global area. And then if it sees it, it's going to print. So if I comment this out too, and try to print out box as I have it here. There's no out box, value of out box. Uh, excuse me, I'm seeing only room box, value of, okay, hold on. I don't know why this is not printing. Uh, please, if you see the error, you can point me at the error. It's supposed to print the value of out box, except my spelling is not correct. Okay, so hold on. Okay, I don't know why it is not running the program. You don't comment on much. Okay. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. I have um, I had um, a statement that says if out box is equal to ten, then print this and my outbox was equals to eight so that statement was false it's going to skip it so i'm going to run the program again and you see i have outbox as 10 which is what i have here okay so you see it it, it checked here and it did not see it checked here and it didn't see it. so it has to print this one here but if in the case is that i had it here even while here is on and i tried to run the program 
it's going to print the closest one to it. Now, it's, uh, it's as if it's not changing, but it's the same thing. Remember, it's because of the condition we have it that I have to give here 10. So it's printing this now. So when it checks, it's the closest one to it that it's going to um, use. So in this case, this, this the one inside of this place is the closest one. So it has to print that one. But if in the case that I, I uncomment this, and comment this, and I, I run the program. You see, it's printing this. Okay, so it's printing this because this is the closest one to 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 it in the block of code I'm trying to use. So this is how uh, variable scope also works. Okay, so I believe, um, Pascal, you understand what I was saying then. Yes, 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 I understand. Um, okay. okay, thank you. All right. So, Igbini Jesu, Samuel, please ask your question. Okay. Um, I want to ask if there is, apart from moving the local variable to maybe a parent function or to the root function of your source, uh, to the root location of your source code, is there any other way to? make a local variable global from where it is yes yes of course there are other ways to do it and this is where um let me turn on this hold on please hold on that's my comment okay so while it is trying to put up okay so there is of course so this is why we have the variable modifier here there are other ways we could um declare our, vari our, our variables and make it global one, one, one of the ways is is to um declare the variable as an external variable in another source file and then we link it to our main file and then we are able to use it that is going to be in the next um lesson but to answer your question yes there is Are you there somewhere? Yes, I'm in Okay, okay. So please, uh, you, maybe you hold on to that, and in the subsequent lesson, you'll see how we can do that. Okay? Okay. Right. Okay. So does anybody have a question before I move into the functions? I believe we understand scope of variables. It's necessary for us to understand this because in the function, remember the problem I, I, I dropped this morning. When we understand this scope, we'll be able to um, solve that problem afterwards. Anybody? Okay, we don't have any, any questions on that. So I'll move, I'll, I'll proceed into the, uh, with my BS, into the next thing we have for today, which is our, um, okay, the next thing we have today is variable modifiers. But I said I was not going to take the class on variable modifiers. I wanted to make it as a homework for us to also do the research. My instructor used to say, if I keep spoon feeding you, you will learn nothing but the shape of the spoon. So I want us to also stretch and look for this. So what are variable modifiers? It, it, there are basically ways um, we could modify our variables for them to, for them to have other features per se. Here it says a variable modifier is a keyword used to specify Type of storage a variable should have so these are some of the so the ones i wanted to talk about is the automatic and the extend and then we should go on to look for the rest so what is automatic i shouldn't dwell on this because this is not really necessary at the moment so when we declare our variable normally like the way we have the int the int a now that is an automatic variable a variable is automatic or auto for short and can be used without specifying the keyword. Yeah, just like you said. So that is what an automatic uh, variable is. And a, an, an automatic variable is destroyed immediately after um, you use it in the function or yeah, or in the, in the particular block of code you are trying to use it. So that is what an automatic function is, meaning you can't reuse it elsewhere. For example, back to my browser, for Okay, for example, if I have um, in outbox, that, so this is an autom automatic variable. Once 
I am done with this program, it is destroyed. I can no longer use it. So that is what an automatic variable is. So I can decide to add auto at the beginning here. But either you add auto to it or you define it without adding auto to it, it's still the same thing. Adding auto to your variable is not really giving you any power or sort in defining your variable. It's the same thing as just using it. So external or extend for short, this modifier declares a variable that is defined in another source file. It is used to access variables in another source file. Example, extend in A. So to explain this, I'm going to use my code block. Since on, on my online compiler, I can't, um, I can't um, have a file open. So I have a data C. So external basically is, let's say um, in our tax that we usually have in um, ALX, where in a particular um, directory, for example, let's say nested, more nested loops or something like that. We usually have our main.h file, right? And we have other files. So let's say I declare, okay, it's already open. So this is a variable I have declared in this particular file. Let me check here if I have. One. Okay. Um, looking for a variable I could change. Uh, okay. Let me use rows. Excuse me, I'm trying to work on something. Okay, this is in A, B, C. So I'm going to say extend row oh, right equals to right. So let me go back and explain that for us. So right here I have okay in okay in A. So um, this modifier declares a variable that is defined in another source file. In this case, our another source file in this case is our order dot C. It is used to access variables and another source file. For example, the so that's clear enough. So I'm not going to define this. I'm just going to create it. Uh, row. So in my order.c file, I'm going to define it. So I'm going to say in row equals to five, right? I've defined it here. And then I'm using the keyword extend. To, to link it to this particular file so that I can be able to use it. It's actually rows, not row. Okay. So if I should come here and try to run the program, you see that I did not define that particular variable here, but I will be able to use it. And if they first use in the case, did you mean row? Okay, rows, sorry. Do I have any place again? No. I'll run the program again. It's running. Let's hang on. So basically, that's what the extend is used for, for you to link your variable to another source file. Somebody asks if there are other ways we could define a variable and use it globally. So in this case, you see, I am able to define the variable in another file and um, i'm able to use it if you look here i did not define it anywhere yet i just declared it here using the extend keyword i have it defined in inside of this place as five okay so that is how you can declare a variable and use it in your program so we are done with that so this is like the homework that we should go and um do our research on on the register the register is another interesting um variable modifier we should know so it's not really necessary in the scope of what we are doing today, which is functions, but it should we should know this, and it is not inside our curriculum in ALX. So we should also know this is important. So I'm not going to give a chance for questions on that because that was not what we we're supposed to do today. So today I'll be moving into functions, which is the main program of today. I want to believe we all under understood the scope of variable because we're going to be using that here. So what is a function? Now, a function is a block of code that, that 
um, performs a specific task. Yes, if you have been writing C programs, you already know what a function is. Sorry. You already know what a function is. When you use your main your main file, sorry, your main uh, program like this, this is a function. This is a function, but in this case, it is our main function. So a function is, is just um, breaking your, let's say, your, your program or your codes into smaller pieces, and you're able to use it. So we learned about this last time. I said, suppose you need to create a program to open a folder and delete files inside the folder. You can create three functions. So instead of sitting down to write you know, from beginning to the end, just like that, it will be too long. And when you are trying to read it or when you want to change a particular thing, it will take you time for you to go through it and identify the error. But what you could do is uh, you create a function to create the folder, a function to open the folder, and a function to delete the files. With this, you'll be able to track down maybe any errors or changes you might want to make. Okay, so with this example, we can say that the collection of functions creates a program. Yes, of course, the collection of programs, when you put functions together, it creates the big program that you have. Now, let's also note that things like printf is a function, but in this case, it has been defined and it has been defined inside of this header file we have here. So that's why whenever we call this printf, we can use it to do what it was defined to do. And then another um, use of function, very important, is, is reusable, which means you can use it as many times as you want in your program, and it will work perfectly. In this case, I have printf like one, two, three times here, and it's still doing different work at the same time. So that's one of the uh, importance of uh, function. So note that even your if statement you have here is a function. Yeah, that's why when you use it, it has been defined inside of um, the, the, the C program itself, the compiler. So that's why you can use it to do whatever you want to do. Now, you can also define your functions and put inside a particular file. For example, let me go back to that code block. Inside order.c file, I could define a function here, and then I will use it here. But in this case, just like I included um, the header file here, I'm going to include my own header. OK, I think I even have an example here. I'm going to include um, a header file here with my with the name of my header file. And then whenever I want to use the function I have here, I have inside that header file, it works here. Just like the way you include this and use your print step and it works. Now, for some of us that normally copy codes and paste without understanding what the main.h file is doing. Now, the main.h file is where you declare your functions. Sorry, yeah, that's where you declare your functions. And then you are able to use those functions in other of your programs. That's why at the top of your program, you always include main.h. Include, then you open your codes, you put your main.h and you close your codes. That is how you include your user-defined um, library or functions, as you call it. So that is some of the importance of function. And that's what, if you missed out on knowing what um, um, the main.h file is. That's what it does. So why should we use function? With functions, we won't have to write the same code or logic over and over again in a program. Of course, we just explained this. We can track, uh, track the program when we use functions. I just explain this. If you have any error somewhere in your program, if you use functions, you can easily go back and check for it and correct it. Now we can call functions multiple times in a program and so it is reusable. Just like using the printf as an example, just look at this thing. I have printf, 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 and it works perfectly. So you can call your function as many times as you want, and it works. So we have types of function. Now we have the library function. Now the library functions are those functions that have been designed inside of our header files, as we know them. For example, stdio.h, which is the header file that has the functions of printf. Yes, and uh, gets um, scanf to you know, those functions, it is this. It, they are designed, they, um, declared or defined inside of this. Now, if you know header files like, like um, um, is it, math? okay, math.h. Now, that header file includes mathematical um, functions, like finding your square root, cube root, and stuff like that. So this is the header file for that. Now, there are other header files for different things. It's time we'll get to also know them but that's what header um, library functions are the the, the built-in functions in the header files 
Now, user-defined function, which is what we will be doing. These are functions that you as a user, you define and use, okay? So now let's begin in creating a function. So in creating a function, first thing you want to do is to declare the function. Okay, let's start to get our hands dirty. So I'm just going to clear this. Clear this. Now I want to remind us in declaring a, a variable. How do we declare a variable? Now, to declare a variable, just tell our compiler that we want a variable that should be able to store a particular kind of data. So I'm just going to say add. So this is how we declare our, our, our variable. Now, note if, uh, the difference between definition and declaration. Declaration, you are only telling the compiler that, okay, I, you are, uh, I want this kind of variable that stores a, part a particular kind of data. In this case, it is int. So you just, you declare with the return type or, or the data type, the name, and then a semicolon. So in this case, this is how we also declare our, um, our functions. So let's read through and see. A function must be declared globally in a C program to tell the compiler about the function name, the function parameters, and return type. Okay, now let's note this keyword, globally. What did we say is globally? Um, global, any function we define um, outside of our main function or at the top of our source file, it is also a global function. Now remember we could also define this function inside of another file and then use it inside of our main program. That, that should be that that file is in the same folder as that of your main function. So we must define our, we must declare our function globally. How do you declare our function? First of all, it does have a return type. This is where I would um, define um, return type. I'm sorry, explain return type. And then it must have a function name and and the parameters. And then you always end a declaration with a semicolon. Always note that this is a declaration, not a definition. So this is what our declaration looks like. So to put this into actual practice, the return type would be int, and our variable name would be add, and then the parameters would be this, and then you end with a semicolon. So in this case, I have um, declared my function. Now, you can also call this function prototype. I think that's the name we use in in, uh, in our tags when they say uh, declare this particular function prototype in your main.h file. So those things you have in your main.h file are the prototype of this. So what does prototype do? It tells the C program that, okay, uh, I'm going to make use of this function. It has not been defined yet, but it's going to be defined somewhere. It could be in an external source file or it could be still inside of this place okay so this is the, the declaration or you say function prototype would use any of the words now there's something that that was mentioned the parameters parameters function parameters now what is parameter let us not confuse parameter with argument okay now what is a parameter a parameter is the variable i pass inside of this place inside of my function so in this place, in this case, my parameter could be of any data type, and then it, it should also have a name. So I will say name name one. Then you can have as many parameters as you want. So in this case, I'm going to have or have two, and then you can have of different data type too. So this is a parameter. The values inside of your um, function is the parameter. Now, what is an argument? Now, argument are the actual values you pass inside of the function, and you mostly use this when you call it. Let's say I see how we're going to call a function. So, but understand that this is a parameter. When we use argument, I'm going to tell you that that is argument. So there are two different things, but although people use it interchangeably, but these are keywords or, or terminologies we should keep in mind. So this is a parameter here. The one we use argument. We, we see how that works. So this is the uh, function declaration or a prototype. Okay. So having um, a prototype, what what next? Next thing you should know is okay. I said I was going to explain return type. Now return type. So I'm going to explain it this way. Let's say you know how when we somebody for their names, 
And then what do we expect? We don't expect them to, to tell us, my name is it. My name is one. We expect them to tell us um, a word with alphabet, of course. Like somebody could say, my name is blessing. That's what we expect. Okay. Now, if you ask somebody, how old are you? You don't expect them to say, I am David years old. You expect them to give you a number, a digit. So that is basically how return types are. Return types tells our program that, okay, I'm expecting a particular um, return type or a, a particular value after you use the, the program. So, so when I declared with int, it means um, this program should return um, a value or, or of int type. It shouldn't return a float, a double, um, a character. So what do what do I mean by return? Uh, what do I mean by it returning a, a, a value? So in this case, let's say I want to define this variable now, and I want to add um, one plus one. Let me just use here as an example. Let me close this. Let me give me issues. When I say re return two or, or return two plus two, now we know that two plus two is four, and four is a whole number, an integer just like an int, right? So in this program here, whatever I'm returning, it should be a whole number, an integer. Now, let us not confuse return with print. When you return a value, it's not going to display on the screen because that is not its function. The function of printf is to display on the screen. So return is just returning a value to your program that, okay, to your function that, okay, I'm done with the, uh, with the um, your function to run it. So this is the value after running this, what, I computed, and this is what I have. So that's what return type means. Now I could have a character here. If I have a character here, I'm, I shouldn't return um, a digit. It should be um, a string or an alphabet or something like that. So that is what a return type is. Now, so when we are not returning anything, we would have void. Void. In this case, I am not expecting to return anything. Now. Mind you, this is not printf. This is not printing. I'm not printing. I'm not displaying an output. So if I'm displaying an output, whether I use void, int, char, float, double, it's still going to print on the screen. That is not a return type. People confuse this. Uh, but I believe after now, we should understand it that um, when you use int, you return a particular value. When you use char, double, or any of that. When you use void, void means nothing. So I'm not returning anything this case. When we start to use it, we'll understand it better. So that is declaring a function, just giving it a return type, a name, and the parameters. I could also declare my function without these parameters, depending on what I want to, to get to understand that. Now, the next thing we should consider doing is the function definition. Don't, don't mind my numberings, please. I want to explain it in the way we should understand. The function definition. What is the function definition? This consists of the function declaration and and um, the body of the function. The body of the function meaning what you want your function to do. Let me read this. It contains the actual statements which are to be executed. It is the most important aspect to which the control comes when the function is called. Here we must notice that only one value can be returned from the function. This value, um, the return value now should be either int, double, float, char, and any of the values you might want to return. So this is basically what uh, function definition looks like. Having your function return and all the parameters, let's say, and then the body of the function. That is what function looks, um, a definition looks like. Now, there are a couple of ways we could define our function, OK? So the first one is I could define it alongside with the prototype. In this case, I'm going to remove the semicolon here, and then I'm going to put it inside the curly braces. This is what it looks like in our example here. So I am declaring and defining it here, but in this case, you won't say declare. I will say I'm defining it here. So the body of my function could be um, dot print is, is a function. Is a function. And then, so you see, I'm not even using any of the parameters. So I'm going to remove this. So when I call this function, the only thing you should do is just to print, this is a function. Okay, so this is uh, me defining a function. 
there are a lot of things you could do instead of here. Some of us have the ideas of that, of course. Okay, let's make it more practical. Now, if you can write any C program, you can use function. So I'm going to say in, let's add two numbers. Or, oh, okay, let's print, no, let's add two numbers. No, two. We've been using this a lot. So let's say I want to return a value now. Okay, so let me do this so we can understand um, return type. So I'm going to use the keyword return num plus uh, num two. Mind you, I have to define I have to tell what num one is. So num equals to four, and num two equals to five. So that is nine. So. So I have defined my function here. I've given it the parameters and everything. I've given it the body and what it should return. So this is function definition. Now let us go into function call. Because those are the three parts of um, creating a function. What is a function call? A function call is basically um, you know, calling your function to do what is basically you using your function. How do we call a function? We call it by using its name. In this case, the name of my function is add. Then I open up my uh, bracket, and then inside of the bracket, you give it argument. Remember, I said this is the parameters. Parameters are the variables you pass into your um, function declaration or definition, while arguments are the actual values that, pre that represent those uh, variables. So in this case, I'm going to say, I'm going to give, uh, okay, let me. Going to give let's say four. Okay, let me remove this so we can compute it with our own digits. So I'm going to pass let me know four and then five. And then this is my function call. You always end with the semicolon. Now you notice that there's no need for me to give it a return type. Now, mind you, this is going to give us an error because we are returning a value. You are returning an int value, which is like um, a whole a whole number. We are returning and int value based on what we have here. But then I'm giving it a return type of void, which means it should not return anything. And then I'm telling it to return something. So it's going to cause confusion here. So now I have, let me store, let me store my, the answer from my um, function instead of the result. And then I'll try to print, yeah, sorry, print on the D, result. So I'll run this. Okay, before I run the program, let me explain this. Now, when you have the parameters here, when you're passing the argument, it should be of the same type as the parameters you pass. So if this was to be a double, the value I should pass here should be a double. If this was to be a character, the value I should pass here should be a character. I shouldn't pass um, um, an argument of, of, of double when in, in the parameters what I had was int. And here too, I shouldn't do that. And also, amount of arguments you have here should, sorry, uh, of, of parameters you have here should be the amount of arguments you have here. So everything must be in accordance. So I will run this program now. So you see, we are having errors. This one says re warning return with a value in function, returning void. So you see, we are trying to return something, but we are using void. So that is the return key keyword. Now, if I come here, okay. If I come here and remove this and turn it to print, because it's returning an int and I run this program. Return num plus num two before token. Okay. Okay, sorry, my semicolon is not here. So you see we have nine, which is the computation between four and five. So in this case, this four represents here and this five represents here. And we said it should return what is here plus what is here. In this case, we have four plus five. As well, and then we stored the answer, what it returned, the sum instead of the result, and then I'm printing the result. So this is what a return type does. But if I change this place to uh, that, let's see what it gives us. Okay, it's, it can print, of course. I'm not sure if we understand the logic between that, but we can use that to print, but that is what a return type is. It should return a value. 
a value. So I believe we've understood function definition, declaration, and call, and also return type. This case, so we can move into um, the next section of of the class. So, but before then, I want to give room for questions. Does anybody have questions so far concerning functions? Anybody? Okay, if you have questions, this is time for you to ask. Okay, so that means everybody understands what we have been doing. No, my hand is up, okay. sir. Okay, okay, I'm saying, and okay, um, please ask a question, Will. Okay, I don't quite understand the return type thing. Really, I don't understand the return type. Because, like, the last okay. example you gave, in the... In the the function, the, the the function that that was above the return type was integers, right? I think it had the num one and num two in there, and then the second one, the return type is zero. So I don't know how that adds up. I mean, so okay. like for example, okay. the first function, if you made the return type zero, what would happen? Wouldn't it still run? And then okay. when you now have to substitute void for the int, saying that. If, if you had void, I mean, I can understand if you had void as uh, as uh, return type, right? I, I mean, yeah, I know, I know that would be complicated if you had uh, the integers, but I don't understand how, as it is now. That's one. Then two, I don't understand the function when when you have like the brackets empty when there there are no um, there are no I, I can't quite can't remember what you just called it now after the name of the variable if you had the brackets. Yes, please. Parameters. Thank you very much. If there are no parameters whatsoever, that's one question. And then the return type, if you could just explain it some more, please. Sorry about okay. you. Okay. All right. Okay. That's very fine. Okay. So, um, first of all, to answer your question about the return type, you said um, this is having zero. Yes. This is having zero as our return value because our main program is we declared it with an int. Okay. So this could have had void too. That is when we are not returning anything. But the reason we return zero is because our program is defined with int and zero too is an integer. So zero means our program run with, uh, without um, failure. It was a, a, a success. And then this was an assignment I gave to us until now nobody has come back to say anything about it. So everybody just slept on it, which is bad. So I'm giving this back as an assignment. Let us go and dig deep while why this is giving us zero here is 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 very very simple this is something that if you just type on 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 google you you you'll see the answer to it very fast and then you come back to the group and we discuss and have fun about it so this is going to be another of our assignments but note that it is returning zero because we declared a function with um int that being void without okay so anything. okay Sorry, since I'm asking, so what if we made the, the upper function return zero also? Would... Okay, of course. Run, instead of returning num, and is that, is that num plus num two? Yes, yeah. of course, it's going to run. It's, it's going to run. But then, if you return zero, that means you just want to return zero. And in this case, I wanted to return um, the addition of this and this. So it all depends on what you want to do. So if I say return zero here, and okay. then I run okay. What do you mean by you want to return the addition? What does it mean? Sorry, sorry, come in. What do you mean by you wanted to return the addition? What does that sentence mean exactly? Okay. What does it okay. mean to, that you wanted to return the addition? Okay. What does that what mean? I, please? Okay. Okay. What I mean is, is is just the main thing here that I want to add what is in this place with what is in this place. It's like me declaring. Uh, it's like me declaring a variable here. Let's say, for example, I, I declare, um, let's say, when equals to num plus num2. I could also write it like this, right? And then I say return when, or I say, okay, I say print f when, right? And then it will return the, the addition of this and this, store it inside of this, and then I print it out to the screen. But I don't need to yeah. do this. I, I don't need to do this. So I can easily say return. Return just means do this. 
Okay, and in this case, I want to add the value of this with this. So I can easily just say return num plus num2. Now you see that if I say return zero, it means this program here should just return zero. That's what I wanted to return. So when I call it here with whatever I call it with, I'm going to store the whatever it returns instead of the result. And in this case, I wanted to return zero. So I'm not doing any additional subtraction here or any other program. So when I try to run it, what is it giving me? Zero here because I'm returning zero in actual sense. So if I was to say, I could just say return one, one plus one. Of course, it's, it's going to return two. Yes, so it is. it does the normal thing that you tell it to do. Okay, so if I say return num, num plus num two, it's going to return whatever I stored in this place and whatever I store in this place, which in this case, when I'm calling it, I'm passing four to represent this, five to represent this sum. So it's going to return four plus five, which is nine in this case. Okay. So okay. Do you, understand? you know what, sir? Yes, I. But but you know that meant my whole idea of return is really skewed. Like I thought return actually meant like, like I mean like from what you're saying, this is this is like a total different definition of the word return. Maybe I need to go and look up, look for what return actually means as syntax in C because I thought return was like, for example, return zero was like uh, was like a go. So that when you return zero, it shows that the program has been successfully run. I didn't realize that return is actually like like a, a like function. a process. Yeah. Yeah, or so to speak, it's I guess. I thought, I, yes, I thought return yes, zero well. meant the program was running successfully. Mm, yes, yes, that's what it means when you use it with our main function here. Yes, oh. but using it, yeah, using it in, in these blocks here, it means you should do whatever you want it to do. Just as I said, as uh, I explained um, earlier, if you ask somebody for their name, you don't expect them to tell you my name is 12 or my name is something abstract. You are expecting a word from them, right? Then if you ask them for their age, yeah. you are expecting a a, a a number two. You don't expect them to say, my name, um, I am OM years old. That is what our return value is. It's going to tell our program, okay, um, this is what you asked for, int, right? So I'm going to return an int to you. So when you say, when you tell it to return something other than what you told it to return here, it's going to give you error. Okay, so that's what the return type does in our functions. Okay. <laughs> you not... Okay, thanks. Okay, I believe if, if you start to practice with it, so you, you, when you do it by yourself, use it in different ways, you really understand. And also, we should note that when our function or when our program encounters a return, is is going to break the, um, let's say, the function, it will, it will end the function. So if I should have had another, let's say, I have print f below this. And then I say this is the um, function. And then I try to run this program. It's, it's still going to return me nine. Because once our program encounters return, it automatically ends the program. So if I wanted it to have this printf, I should put it before the return. And okay, let me just paste it there. And then I have another one. Okay. So if I run this program, we say, okay, let me add a new line. And I run the program. So we have, this is the function, which is this, and then it return this, but then we are not seeing this. So whenever our function encounters return, it automatically ends or break the program. That's why when it encounters this, without any um, failure in our, pro whenever our, our program ends, and without any error, that means it executed successfully, and then it will return this zero to the operating system. I wouldn't want to explain this because that is the homework for us, but that is basically what a return is. Return, once our program encounters return, it automatically ends the program, and then goes inside the next program or, or the next function it sees. So that is that for return type and whatever it is we might have there. So pass question on, so please ask a question. So we can move to the next thing. Okay, um, thank you very much, Mr. Davis. 
um, back to that question you saw, I think my confusion here is um, the, the return there. Is it the most who use return? What if we use another um, another function for that? Or is the return a, a constant for the function there? I want to understand No, that. no, it is not a constant. It is whatever you want to do. I could have easily said, okay, uh, print f modular d plus modular d equals to modular d. So we know how to do this. So this could be norm. This could be norm one. And then this will be norm, norm plus norm, norm one. Right? And then when I run this program, what do we have? Uh, norm two. Okay. You're wrong. Okay. So, okay. Sorry, norm two. I have norm two there, not norm one. Uh, norm two. Then I run the program. What do we see? Four plus five is nine. Why nine nine? Okay, okay, okay. That's because let me add a new a new line here. It's also printing out what is here. So because there's no line, it's as if it's joined together. So, so you see, we have four plus five equals to nine, and why are we having ten here? Which means our program has added. I wouldn't go into that, here, but, but this is it. You could. Actually, you do whatever you want to do. It's not a must you use a return type. You can do whatever you want to do. It depends on whatever you are trying to achieve. So that is that. Okay. Pascal. Okay, and then okay. Second, so, what, okay. what, is, what is now the, the, the function of what we have inside the main function? If we already executed what is in the, um, in the, uh, the first um, this thing that's under the function, what is the need for the main again? What is the need there? In, of course, every, everything we are going to be doing is going to be inside the main. This is just a function definition. You can't use this here. This is where I'm actually using it. When I call, when I call it, this is where I'm calling it. Remember, this this four is not here. This five is not here for it to do the computation. This is where I'm calling it. And when I call it, this becomes this. This becomes this. And then whatever I ask it to do with, with the values happens inside of here. And then returns the value it returns to this result. That's why I'm saving it inside of here. And then I'm able to print it here. So this is just a declaration, not the, uh, the usage. This is where I'm, I'm using it in actual sense. Okay. Okay. So nobody has any more questions. We can move on. I believe everybody understands. Okay. So let's go to where um, I believe made it um, interesting from the um, tax I dropped this morning, which is call, call by value and call by reference. I can't hear the sound again. Okay. Okay. So now call by value and call. Um, function, right? So now it is time for us to understand what it means for us to call it by value and what it means for us to call it by reference. This is where we learn how to solve this problem I posted this morning. So let's stick close. So let's start with the first one, call by value. So in this, this is actually how to call our functions, okay? But in this case, call by value. So in this method, a copy of the argument value is passed to the function, and any changes made to the argument within the function do not affect the original value outside the function. So this is English. Most of us, it's not good. I'm going to grab that to make it interesting. So let's say I have Wem here and I have Samuel here. Let's say um, Wem sells cars and Samuel wants to buy a car. And then Samuel goes to meet Wem and then he pays for the car and then um, it's time for him to give Samuel, the papers of the car. He goes inside, he makes a photocopy of the papers, keeps the original in his house, and then hands over the photocopy to Samuel. Maybe to the house, something happened. He said, on point, he tore the papers, he threw it away. Now, he no longer have the papers. But the good thing is, Wem still has his original papers. So nothing happened to the original, only the photocopies. So, that is basically what call by value means. So a copy of the argument 
that's the purpose for this example. This is what we are passing into the function. It's passed to the function, and any change is made to the argument. That means anything that happens to the argument inside that function is not going to affect the original values, that is the original argument or, or what we pass as argument. So I'll just copy, copy this code I wrote here. So we can better understand. So in this in this code, what am I doing? I'm trying to swap the the digits of x and y. Okay, so I have declared a variable here, ten, and I assign the value of x to ten. Now I assign the value of y to x, and then that value that was that was of x that I assigned to ten, I assign it to y. So I swap the um, the variables now. Now. In my main function, I have a variable that is equals to A. I have B equals to 200. Now, see what I'm printing here, before a swap. So remember, our, our, our compiler or our program is read line by line. So after this line, it prints this. So in this case, it's still printing the original values before I call our function here. Let me run this while I explain it. So before our swap, you see A is still equals to 100, and B is still equals to 200, which is the original values. And then I call our program. Now, basically looking at our program here, what is supposed to happen? Our um, values here are supposed to be swapped based on what we wrote here. Of course, it was swapped in the program. But because we called it by value, these variables we see here are local to this um, function here. Yes, let us know that. They are local to this function here. So whatever happens inside of here, what? Maybe we swap, we do anything. Once we are done with this function, everything is dead. It's no more alive. So in, in this place now, I'm calling our swap um, function. Then we pass in the, the argument 100 inside of here, 200 goes inside of here. So it's supposed to be that um, 100 here should be equal to 10. Then x, which is 100, should be equal to y, becomes 200. And y becomes what was in x initially, which is 100. So y is now 100, x is supposed to be 200. In the main program, this variable, and we call it by value. Calling by value means we just pass a copy of what we have here into of this place, and we still have the original. So once this program, once this function is done in this place, everything that happened inside of it is dead. And then we printed after swap, Still, that we still have the same um, um, variables, the same values we have here. So in this case here, call by value, this is our papers that OM handed over to Samuel. And then um, Samuel takes it to the house, which is the function here. We wrote on it, he tore it, and he threw it away. So when he threw it, it, he threw it away, it was gone. But OM here still had the original copies, which is what we have here. So that is what it means to call by value. Let me um, do something here so that, sorry, you can better understand it. So I'm going to say, print F mm, in, in the swap. In the swap, we have, we have, let's say, A, or A is X, Y, A equal, X equals to, let me, let me use X, no. Let me use a. So our x is supposed to be supposed to be what? Okay, modulo d. While our b is supposed to be modulo d. So in this case, our this our a is representing our x. So x x is yeah a is x. I'll write it here, and then b is y. So let's print this and see. I should add a new line to that. Uh, new line. And that is the third one. I'll run this program. Now, you see what happens here. Now, this printf is local to this um, function here. 
So that's why whatever I did inside of here, I can use the printf to display to the screen. So we have here in the swap, which is what I wrote here, A is equals to 200 and B is equals to 100. Remember, our A is equals to 100, B is equals to 200, but we swapped it here. So this is what we have as the value. But before the swap, which is the originals here, we have it here as the original. Then after the swap, that is after we executed this, that we executed this 200, everything is back to normal. 100 A is equal to 100, B is equal to 100. So that means what we passed in, um, into the function, it did not affect the original, just like the papers that OM gave to Samuel. Um, Samuel tore it, and he said, threw it away, but then OM still had the original, nothing happened to it. So that is what it means by calling by reference. Okay. When we do call by, um, I'm sorry, this is called by value basically just passing a photocopy of our values into the function and then it do its work and then afterwards we still have the original the way it is now let us do call by reference so we can better understand this program so call by reference in this method a reference to the argument is passed to the function and any changes made to the arguments within the function affects the original value outside the function. So what does this mean? Let's say in the process of giving him the papers, he gave him the original. What happened? He goes to the house, he, he writes on it, that is the original. If he tears it, it's the original. So whatever he, he is doing with that is the original, okay? So there is no photocopy somewhere you see you fall back on. So that is what called by reference is actually making changes to the original copies. So I'm just going to copy this. Now, I will explain this to so understand it better, and then we'll solve that problem we had. So in this case, we have the same function, but written in another way. Now, you see, we declared this um, this as, as a pointer, as a pointer. Why, why do we do it as a pointer? Um, we've not got into pointers, but we've done pointers in LX, so we should know what pointers are in a way. So we use pointers to... Um, to access the memory location of a particular variable. Okay, so basically pointers are variables that hold the memory location of another variable or a value. That is what um, pointers are. That's why we declare this bit pointer. So how does this work? So when we do this, um, these um, pointers are accessing the memory location of this not just the photocopies of this, the memory location of this. So because of that, they are able to change the values, use the values and do anything that they want to do. And then it's going to affect the main program here. So we already saw this in the, in the other program. The only difference is um, declaring each of these with a, uh, a pointer. Now, when we call our function here, what do we do? This is called the reference operator, or we can call it, um, this is the ampersand um, symbol. What does it do? It's referencing to the memory location of A and B, okay? We normally use this in our scan F when we're trying to take inputs. What happens? We use this so that we can um, access the memory location of that and then store whatever we want to store instead of that. So in this case, this is um, referencing or accessing the memory location of A and B. A and B is what we have here, 100 and 200. And this, this pointer is going to store the memory location of this. Okay? When you declare a pointer, that's what it does. So something to note that when you declare a pointer like this, okay? Now, when you, when you, for what it was meant for, which is to store uh, memory addresses, okay? So in this case, I'm going to say X equals to, yes, I want to store the memory location of A. I'll say x equals to a. I'm not going to put this asterisk here again. But when you want to um, access the value that is there, like that is stored in the memory location of this uh, of that particular variable, what do you what do you do? You use the differencing um, operator, which is this asterisk you're seeing here. So what does this asterisk do? It's actually um, accessing the value that is stored in the memory location of whatever this is going to be. That is what this means. If I remove this from this program, it is, it, is, it is only going to access the memory address, nothing else. But if I add this, it will difference it and then access the value stored on that address. That is what this does. While this is 
referencing the memory location of that. So is it is able to both of them are able to communicate this communicates to this and this communicates to this and they are able to access themselves. So this accesses the um, memory location and then is able to use the value stored in that memory um, address. That is what this does. So in this case, because we are um, accessing the memory location, that is the root of it where this thing was created. We are able when we difference it, we are able to use the value stored in that memory address. So that's why if I should run this program here, you see, before the swap, remember our code is, is being run from line by line. And in this case, after here, what, what this still is, is 100 and 200, which is what we have here. But after we call our function, what happened? This swap take, takes uh, place. And after the swap, our A becomes 200 and our B becomes um, 100. So with the call by... Uh, reference you, you uh, whatever you do in your function with the variables you pass in as arguments is going to affect the main program just like in the case of um using buying of the cars an example so whatever samuel did with the paper that is the original he cannot get it by affecting the original so whatever we do with this is going to affect the original so um the question is if then when do we use the call by value and then the call by reference it's, it's clear here that when you are trying to create a function that should not affect um the main function that is the values in the main function you just want to create a function that computes its own values and then keep it its own value without having is we just going to use the, the values in the main function without having to um distort it or change it or destroy it in a way you use the call by value. But when you are creating a function that is going to, it should touch um, the main program, it should change things depending on what you are doing, then we should use the call by reference. And this is how you do it. Okay? So I'm, I'm just going to open up that, that problem we had in the morning. Just copy it and then let's just explain it and see what, what, what was happening behind the scene. So this was the exact problem here. So here we have voice swap. Was this the problem? Yes, I think. Yeah, I copied from the group. So we've done this as usual. So what happens here? Int x equals to 10, y equals to 20. Before the swap, what happens? We just print exactly the original because we've not called the function yet. And I'm going to run the program. Term is equal to what is stored in A. If value that is differencing to access the value stored in the memory address of A. And in this case, we pass into this space. So then, and then in the next one, we difference this again and say um, whatever is inside of place where you, are, where you assign B should be stored in A. So the memory address of this, the value stored in B. Is now 20. So A becomes 20. We take note of that, which is our X here. And then in the B, remember in the beginning, um, we assigned the first value of A to 10, which in this case was 10. 10 here. So and then we assign that value back to B, which is 10. That is why our Y is 10. So it was the example of call by reference that you could use to solve this. And I believe we now understand where this was heading to. I was expecting you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Blessing. Yes. So, uh, um, what happens in a case of small value and then you add the return? Maybe you return um let's say a and b okay let's say i return i return what a and b without the I... uh without the referencing okay so that means i'm going to need um a variable to store this now 
remember we use void here meaning yeah. it should not return in, in anything so re trying okay. to return something is going to give you an a error oh. it's oh, yeah okay. it's not going to return anything and if i want okay. to like check something here see invalid operands to binary and that so it's okay. going to give you an error because a returning void oh okay 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 so you okay so do you have another question okay does this only work when you have void as your return type mm, what no, if you had an no, integer no. as a return type okay let's say i haven't no everything depends on what you're trying to okay okay so let's say i want to return the addition of the addition of it i'm going to difference this i'm going to reference that i can access uh sorry I'm, should i say addition right addition okay addition so for me for us to actually see this if i run this program here let's see now you're not seeing the addition of this and this because I, this is not um displaying to the screen this is just a return a, a return keyword um the function is just to return something so if you want to actually see see what is supposed to be on the screen here i'm going to use a print f function so i'm going okay. to say so in this case i'm going to say uh let's say let me store the value of that i'm going to since it is a print type the variable I'm, to, I'm, I'm going to store it into should also be an int so i will say in let me use result let me use your name here so print blessing right and then i'm going to print the value of blessing in this case it's an integer and then i'll say blessing from the program this is going to be scattered 30 why because 20 plus 10 is 30 so that is that okay so I, what i mean now is in a situation where you're not referencing yes and you use okay, the return where, no, where I'm not different, uh, the referencing. Yeah. Okay, when I'm not using any of these asterisks. Asterisk, yes. Okay, okay. Um, the asterisk here is mm -hmm. if when you okay, I said earlier that when you define, let me just go out of this program. Let me just go somewhere else. Okay. 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 So let me just let this. Okay. Let me just clear this. Okay, so when we declare, um, okay, when we declare a pointer, let's say a name is blessing, right? Blessing. And then, okay, let me declare another variable here. Let's say in, in, uh, okay, so now, if now equals to, let's say, eight. And then I declare a pointer here, and then I say, I, just, I, de I declare the pointer, and then I say, uh, blessing equals to none, right? And then I try to print blessing uh, model dot d, uh, and I say blessing, right? And then I try to run this program. Let's see what it gives us. Okay, it gives us eight because um, I didn't difference it. But what if I add this to this place and I still run the program? Okay, that is going to give us. Okay, now this is the memory address of of this. Hold on. Let me reference it too so you can understand. Why it didn't run. So let me go back to our program. So in essence, if I don't put any of this, but I defined it here, the value you are going to see is going to be the memory address of all these things. So the asterisk there is just returning um, the value, the value stored on these addresses is accessing the values stored in the memory address of this. That's why we use the asterisk.
But if I define it as a pointer, and then I don't use the this, uh, the asterisk here, meaning that it's a pointer, that means actually going to do the main work, which is to store memory addresses. So I'll just run this. See, it's giving us errors here without a cast. Yes, of course. Is is um sometimes memory addresses, as we saw, is something like many numbers, thousands, and also our int. Remember, it's, 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 it can access values up to is it thirty something thousand or so. So in some cases, you might not be able to print memory address of this like this. Okay, but let's say okay. I do this. These are things that we can do practically and. It's very enjoyable. Okay. Um, why? Invalid type argument of Unary. Have in blah, 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 up front. So, but this is used. I wanted to use this to, I don't know, should I use this? Reference. Uh, I'm still having that typecast. Okay. I wanted to do something for us to see the actual digits. Okay, okay, okay. See so what we have here. So we have so okay. the number are way more than what int can give you. So sometimes going to run into errors. Of course, I gave us the homework of also looking at other um, data types. There are other data types that could print numbers up to this. Nobody okay. has said anything about. In the, in the homework, nobody has done it yet. We did that, I believe, that we have an idea on, on what can put value up to this. So, in essence, this, um, when I add asterisks to this, it's only accessing the value stored in the memory address of this. Just this could be said to be um, a house, it's okay, let's say in a street, and then there are many houses, and you know, houses are big. We don't, we you can't just come and say, okay, this is someone's house. They must give you a number, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So when you use the asterisk there, it is accessing the the number of that house in particular. Okay, the, the memory addresses in our PC looks like this. Okay, so uh, we won't know which one is this and which one is that. But when you dereference it with the asterisk, it's accessing whatever is stored in the memory address of this. That is the essence of pointers too. We dig deep into that at uh, some point. So, but for now, I hope we get the idea with the behind um, call by value and call by reference. We should be able to solve this now on our own. So, okay, Dixon has a question. Okay, Dixon, please ask. Dixon, please ask your question. You might want to unmute your mic so we can hear you. Dixon, we can't hear, hear you. Okay, maybe I lost it. So, does anybody have another question before we move into anything we might want to do again? Okay, Uwem has a question. Okay, Uwem, please ask your question. Okay, David, this is my question. Are you really like like really like really like in court 11 or are you like from other call are you or you like a no spy question, that sorry. makes sense to just and stuff because um, i don't know how you know all this stuff already i mean i'm in cohort 11 i'm in cohort 11 like you too please let's not even go there i don't i, I don't um, seriously yeah. i don't no 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 seriously i don't i don't even know what what people people know I'm only, I don't know. Let's not even go into that. But... <laughs> <laughs> let me off. Let me off my mic before I laugh and fall down for this day. <laughs> okay, please, please, don't your mind. Yeah, probably, I believe that Alex sent you. Julian sent you because just go undercover, like you're a spy. I think you're a spy. No, 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 no. We are all the same here. We are all the same. The things I know here, I believe, is the, is the things you know. But. <laughs> no, but really, did you learn? I mean, like, is it possible to learn all this stuff? Like, like, well, I mean, like, since we got here in, in November last year. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I learned all of, all, all of this from the November till now. I have not had any experience with um, C or are you know. a liar. No, I'm serious. You are a big fat liar. 
but no problem. Since he can do it, if I can do it, I'll, 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 I'll just tell him more. Thanks. Yeah, of course, of course. Everybody can do it. Any of us can do it. I just, this is me. I mean, I'm, I'm always very um, excited about it, about in, anything tech. So when I got into the program, too, it was a drive for me to add to disturb so many persons I had to connect to and they were giving me insights on what to do, what to do, what to learn, what not to learn. So I believe with the whole link up and meeting others too, it helped me in a way to learn. You know, if you spend if if, if you spend time on these things and also with people who knows it, they are going to influence you even if you don't even learn it. Sometimes I find myself even doing some of the things I don't know yet. But because I was there when they were doing it, I just started doing it. I've not understood it yet. And then later on, I have to ask what is happening behind the scene, and they tell me. So, and also your ability to also understand the, the, the what is happening behind that. Like, let's say before this our print, I was wondering how does what is the function? What how did they define that function that you are able to use print F and it works like this? That was what I was asking myself. Not even knowing that we are going to have um, um, a project on print F. So I didn't go on looking for what happens behind the scene. Instead, I was asking people. And then nobody answered me. They were like, why don't I go and look for it? And the laziness to look for that was there. So I didn't want to go. Until one day, I, I felt, what if somebody asked me the same thing? What am I going to say? So I went on to looking for it too. And then I did not really get what I was looking for. I wanted to see like the way we declare our function here and define that. I was expecting to see a function declaration and definition of how print F works, but I saw how to modify print F, make it do the thing it does. I was when that project came, I was excited too, but I was disappointed because it was difficult. And that's just it, that's just it. So, okay, uh, let me check, do we have any other thing here? Okay, so I think that's the end of our, we dealing with functions. Now, there, there is more to functions. For example, we have um, types of functions too. Like the one you call with argument, um, with a return type, without argument, with a return type. Four, there are basically four of them. But I want us to understand this and start to use this before we start bothering about that. Those ones are not really, really, really important. If you know how to use functions, by the time you see that, you'll be like, okay, this is this, we put this here, we put this there. So I want us to understand this. I have a couple of um, problems here we should solve. So I'm hoping to pass this on and then. Some of these things, these things yeah, we've not treated them, so I don't expect us to know how to do this. Like me, from this 26, 25 down, I don't know them yet. But these are things I'm going to pass on for us to try. I This one, I was playing with somebody to deal with this, and it was fun. I'm going to, this is the first thing we should do, okay? I don't really have any practice problems here. I would say let us deep dive. But my aim here today was for us to understand functions, and I believe we do. So please... We have come to the end of it, but I want to ask, do, do we still have issues anywhere, both in variable scope or in functions on its own? Do we have, let's ask our question. Okay, Duxin, please, your hand is up again. Duxin, your hand is up. Yeah, good evening, good evening. Good evening to, uh, to you too, brother. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Please speak. Good evening. Okay, good evening. You see. Wow. Okay, I, I, I think that's your network there. We can hear you, but can't hear. So nobody has the questions on functions. That means we understand them properly. Nobody has a question on scope of var variables. We understand them properly. Very good. Then this variable modifier. It's not something we should worry about, but it's not in our curriculum in AL, in ALS, but it's in C. We should know them. I, 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 yeah, we should know them. It's really, really important. In case we see a source code somewhere, we see functions are defined somewhere, and then we don't see something. We should know that perhaps they did it somewhere else in a file. That's, so that is our homework. Please, we should go back to it and try to look, uh, look it up to. Duxin, please speak. Duxin? Okay. Uh, Duxin, we lost you there. So, since nobody has a question, this is where we're going to end the class. But before then, uh, I would like people to meet my 
my partner. She's like uh, a motivation to me. Yeah. Uh, she's one I worked with during the print. Uh, in fact, from the beginning of the program, she's like my, my, my scholar in this. She makes me learn the things I, I do and then also do all these things I'm doing. Um, her name is Abigail. You can call her Tofumi. So, um, Tofumi, please unmute your mic and say hi to my people. Hi. Hi, everyone. Okay. So, everybody can hear you. Uh, hi. Hello. Mr. So, this was the lady that started away from me, Mr. Davis. <laughs> okay. Definitely. Yeah, okay. she is. <laughs> no okay. Thank Mrs. you for that. Mrs. Well done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. That's very nice. So, this is it for functions. So we now understand functions. So I'm going to go back to our, our repository. Oh, somebody posted something. I want to go back to our repository. Um, I've not really been seeing hands on the repository. I don't know what is happening. But there are some, some things that I have not reviewed yet. Yes, and I'm going to go back um, to it. Some people that have, that have done their tax up to tax 19 or tax 18. But for those of us that have not done anything yet, I can only do my best and try to give you these things for you to help yourself. These are advices I take from um, people that are um, on top of me, you know, my seniors, our seniors too, people I talk to, and then they say, do this, do that, and I filter them, and the ones that are best, I also ask us to do it. Some of the things I do, I tell us to do are like things they told me to do, and it was helpful, and I'm asking you to do it. So I created a repository for those who join us for the first time. It's a repository named C Programming Tutorial. There, everything inside of this this here is available there. And then we have a directory, or you could say a folder where we have all these tags. Right now it is from one to 18, there's nothing inside 19. So you have to attempt these tags. All of them comes from each of the things we've done. You are, you are supposed to um, go to the repository, then you fork the re repository, and, and then you clone it to your machine, wherever you're working, either Ubuntu, Gitbash, VS Code, or wherever, oh, wherever you're working, you clone it. And then now the one you're cloning should be the one you fork. So that is the one on your profile. You fork it and then you use it. You attempt those tags and then you push it back to your GitHub. When you push, you go back to your GitHub and then create a pull request. When you create a pull request, I'm going to um, get a notification that you've done something and then I'll go on to check. When I check, uh, it is um, correct. I'll review you and tell you, okay, this is okay. If it's not, I'll tell you where the errors might be coming from and then you are just, some persons will do it and it's very, very nice. I will tell them, okay, try it this other way. Some persons will go back and do it again and they'll be like, wow, so it would have been done this way, I didn't know. And this is how we learn to. Sometimes I see your solutions too and it's very inspiring. I go through it and I enjoy looking at it and I learn a few things from it too. So please, if you've not done this, it is for your own good. Go back and look at it. It's going to help you, believe me. Anyone you don't understand, you can ask your peers. You can also ask me. Anything like that is going to help you. And then I want to also um, tell us the best way for us to also grow and learn is by helping others too. So by the time you explain something to somebody, you see the, 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 the parts where you're not too comfortable with, then you can go back and look at it. With that, you are developing yourself too. So please, if anybody should drop a question in the group, it's something you can attend. You try, but if you cannot answer it, I would say, since you don't know it, you should also go and look for that particular thing and know it at that time. In case um, in the future, something like that arises, you know how to handle it. That is also how we learn. And join communities. Yeah, very important. I said this the last time. Our, our speaker who spoke yesterday also mentioned this. Please join communities. Get to meet people, link up is very important. It's going to help you to learn. Learn to, yeah, I belong to a lot of communities, even both on Slack, um, Twitter, um, Instagram, and uh, Telegram too. We discuss a lot. So it's going to help you. Please belong to communities. This is where you can meet seniors, people who are in the tech space, you know, experienced people. And then if you have any problem, you can go on to ask them. And they are going to explain to you in an advanced way. And, you know, you will even learn more. Believe me, this LX tax we are doing, many people are saying that there's nothing in it. Okay, in the real life world, it's not what you're expecting. Most of us are having issues with C. 
as simple as this. Both of them will start to um, start um, uh, 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 to work on data bases. You check our curriculum, there's a lot of things we do. Believe me, the databases we are doing, we're not doing one, we're not doing two, we're doing up to three or four or more, more seven. And then we still have to learn JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, even if they are doing back in the front end. And then networking. And also to give us head start, we are having another project in two weeks or three weeks, something like that, on simple shell. So I advise anybody so that some of us won't experience what we experienced last time. We start hooking up with somebody. So when it gets to that time, you won't be paired with somebody you don't want to be paired with. So in three weeks or so, or two weeks, we'll have our project on Simple Shell. So you can start working towards that so that when it comes, we're going to do copy and paste it again. And then I am planning to pay us. Yeah, in some of the tags we're having here, they said that should also pay us so that we can learn together. Somebody's name is up. So we can also learn together. It's going to help us, uh, believe me. So I might pair us in groups of three and then give us something for us to do and then we present that. And then sometimes we are going to have like, um, I wouldn't call it a competition, but for us to share ideas, give us a simple task and then we do it on the spot. Thank God for this, please. I, I, I said it earlier that everybody should, everybody should go and um, open up replit.com, sign up and then wait for further instruction. Whenever we'll be having those competitions or group, um, Challenge that's what we'll be using so we can code at once. I'll invite people to join us. So, so, what is going to say? Replit, yeah. So, what is that thing? Sorry. Okay, it is an online compiler, just like what we have here in programming. It's online compiler, that's the same thing. Like the C programs, okay. But this, yeah, so in, in but in a more advanced way, where you can also clone your repository from GitHub. Like, if check here, I have the C program tutorial here. And there are a lot of things you can do. I have the console here, I have the shell. You can also open up your git bash console too. Basically, I see doing all the things I could do on my VS code, but then I have not really explored it to see other. You could even chat to me. I saw this and it was very, very beautiful. So, everybody should register on this and I'll tell us what to do next. You can register and then you see where to clone this repository. You still go on and clone it in case you want to work from it. It's nice too. So please, all these things okay. I'm saying. Please, can you pay me with blessing? Up. No, I can't pay you blessing. I'll pay you with whoever I'm going to pay you with. Who knows? Oh, I'm, I'm even thinking. <laughs> please, I'm, they're I'm already working, working together. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Till then, till then, I'm thinking of of we are going to get the names of everybody who are active, and then we should write a program that when we when we run that particular pro um, program, it um, pairs people. Let's say. Two people versus two people with their names because it would be like blessing to Kumike, Mokoye, Oye versus Kumedi Moor and Edu Brazil. So we could do that kind of. I just thought of it today that when when this idea came up with the pairing, I thought of we should write a program that should do this. So we won't have to say this person should do this, this person should join this person. It wouldn't be fair, but our own program is going to be the one to pair us. It would be nice. I'm, I'm making an arrangement for that too. Blessing, please oh, ask a question. Yeah. Will there be car gifts? Yeah, we'll... <laughs> <laughs> will there be car gifts? Okay, as as this is as, evil as, as girl. As yesterday asked about car. money. Today asked me about car. <laughs> Calm down. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. 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 As far as you be the one to buy the car and keep so that whoever wow. wins will take the car. Just wow. Yes. <laughs> okay, Pascal. Please let's hear from you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. David. Sincerely, I am very, very grateful for this very opportunity you created. You're not just impacting us, you're also giving us hints on how to succeed in this very field. I really appreciate what you're doing. Thank you, and God bless you. And then for thank you, sir. for the the class we had yesterday with Mr. David Ozoku, he said he was going to send the link to you, to us, yeah. So that we can follow up on 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 um, sites where we can apply for jobs, and then also for pricing and the rest of it. And I think he said something like that yesterday when uh, when he was talking to us. I don't know if you should reach out to him to to send those links to you so that you can drop for us in the in the group. And then for 
this very um, site you talked about this evening, uh, the Replit, does it run? Um, does it have a software package, or are we going to do it um, on the Chrome browser directly? Are we going to do it directly on the Chrome browser, or does it have a software where we can just install in our system and work directly on it, just like we use the, the VS Code? And then finally, for uh, pairing and the, the, the that, just like a body code you talked about. It's also a very nice idea. I think that is going to serve as a motivation to some of us that are slagging behind. It's going to stand as a motivation. If you're going to do it in such a way that you put the 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 warm and and the hot together, that's going to be an idea. Don't put hot and hot together, please. If you go hot and hot, it's not going to be fair on some people. Thank you once again, and God bless you. Okay, thank you. So to to start from the beginning of your question about the links okay i forgot that so after now i'm going to oh, it's already almost 11. tomorrow i'm going to call him and then ask ask for it he will definitely send it perhaps he forgot to would have sent it i'll ask for it and then what does this say about the replit yes it is an online compiler so it only runs on chrome they don't have a package they can download and use so you could use this on both your phone as, as far as you have a browser you can use it it works and then about the pairing, okay, remember, I want to know your strengths. Yeah, I don't know your strength. I don't know this person's strength. But however it is, I'll try as much as possible. I'm going to get everybody's names. I think I need that. After now, I'm going to drop something, and then we should submit our names. That at least I know most of the persons here we've, we've spoken, and somehow I, I should know some of our strengths. So I'll try as much as possible to pair us accordingly. But I'm not saying I know our strength that I should say, you go to this and you go to that. But I will try my best okay so that is all for that and i want to say a very big thank you to our media team too they've been doing well women is, is the coordinator they've been doing well uh, since the beginning of having the media team our the sessions has been recorded and kudos to them so please after now in the group too, we should also appreciate them it's not easy for them to to do that it's a big work so i tried doing that and then i was having an issue but see us today all our sessions are are recorded. Edu Brazil, please let's hear from you. We are we've closed, so let's just take hear from people. Edu Brazil, please. Okay, good evening, house. Um, actually, this is my first time of uh, attending a section like this. But well, throughout last week, the reason why I couldn't attend is because of my church program. I attend salvation ministry, so. They concluded the glory rain. All the days I missed, but whenever I, I came back from church, I do go through the recorded section. I, I I play them and also practice what others have been doing. And I want to say something about uh, Mr. David. You have been an inspiration to some some of us here. And I want to say thank you for for, for that. Thank but you. today, since today since I didn't miss today's section, I believe from today henceforth, I will continue to follow up. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for that. And great, I'm happy to hear that you also be following up. It's a good thing. We're always happy to have you amongst us. So if you have any issues, you can always reach out to me on WhatsApp or any other person you feel comfortable. No, with. I, I can reach out uh, to you on Slack. Oh, anywhere at all, anywhere at all. But I'm not okay. usually very active on Slack. I only come there. I only come there once in a while. So if you drop a message and I don't get you, please, yeah, we can okay. do. But on WhatsApp, you can always reach me at any time. Okay, WhatsApp yeah. will be better. Yes, yes, that's best. Okay. Okay, no problem, man. And thank you again. So, okay, Chino, so please. Let's hear from you. Sorry, for the last time, uh, you talked about the media team. I think uh, Mr. Mr. Wilma has been talking about that, but I didn't even know the, the media team have been created. But the, if there is a link for them, if you send to me, I want to join the media team also, please. Thank you. Oh, okay, great. Ah, it's very good to hear that you want to join the media team. That means our, our, our community is expanding. So after... A coordinator in in the media team so you just reach out to him and 
Oh, well, please, after now, you make yourself known in the group so that those who are interested in, in it, so you will carry them along. I don't know how you could do it, but sure, you do it. Well. even drop the link. Thank you, everybody's welcome. Okay. Come on, come on. We need all the answers we can get. Thank you, everybody. And thank okay. you, David, for this. Thank you so much, David. Thank you. <laughs> okay, blessing, please. Okay, apart from the media team, is there any other team, like some of us who don't know Jack about media, but we just want to be, like something good is going on here. And I, some, for some of us, it, we, we are looking for a way we can actually be helpful and not just be floor members. So is there any open space or something we can do aside media? Okay, okay, okay. So I'm, I'm working towards that too. I'm working towards having another um, team that is going to do a particular thing. I'm not going to reveal it yet until it is set. So when that is, is done, I believe we are going to need your hand too. Yeah, you in particular. So yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm working towards it. And I'll reach out to you on that. And afterwards, you will also reach out to those who may want to join that particular team. And thank you for that. Okay, thank it. you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, so that is all for today. I want to appreciate everybody for being out here again. It wouldn't have been possible if you were not here. So thank you, everybody, and thank you for being here. So see you again maybe tomorrow. I don't know if you are going to have a session. If not, see you anytime I drop a link. We are going to have a session. So you can unmute your mic now. And say bye or good night to your teammates. Good night, everyone. Good night, baby. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.